Hello and thanks for joining me for a quick chat on the Uploaded by Ferret Steinmetz. This is the most recent book that I finished. This was published this month, 20, uh, September 2017, um, by uh, Angry Robot Books. And yeah, I wanted to read this. You know, I, I just finished up my uh, must read uh, 2017 must read list. And so um, it was, uh, you know, time to kind of do my free reading. And I had seen that uh, Ferret Steinman's had another uh, a new work that was, you know, coming out in September. So I thought this was perfect timing, right? So, um, you know, I was expecting it to be a lot of fun to read. And it, it turned out it really was. I read this author's uh, previous work. He did an urban fantasy trilogy called the Mancy series, which I've talked about a number of times on my channel. The first one's called uh, Flex, and the second one's called The Fix, and the last one, um, no, the first one's called Flex, and the second one's called The Flux, and then the third one's called Fix. So yeah, I read that series uh, late 2015, and the last one, third one of that series came out last year. And so yeah, I, I thought it would be a lot of fun, and it really turned out to be. This one is a little different, though. This is science fiction uh, cyberpunk as opposed to urban fantasy, which the Mancy series was. Um, but this takes place in a world, it's our Earth in the future, where... Um, um, the, the ability to upload minds upon death, you know, that technology has been developed and has been around for several centuries. So by this point, the majority of um, people exist in digital form. And, you know, and so um, the way that the culture has structured itself is around attaining this sort of immortality. So living is considered a brief a period of time where you have to do labor. Um, the labor is just things that machines can't do. Um, and so uh, the, the society is really crumbling. The infrastructure is crumbling. Um, all of the, really all the resources and most of the energy goes to maintaining the servers that are scattered all around the world um, that, you know, holds the dead. And so, um, you know, our story is set. We have a couple of main characters. They're young people um, who are um, trying to test in. One of them wants to be an architect. The other thing is the, the jobs and things. Like I said, anything that requires a lot of skill, of course, the dead can do it better. Like Because they've had centuries, in some cases, to perfect their knowledge, right? So um, artists and... Um, um, these kinds of jobs, architects and engineers and things like that, these kind of jobs are mostly done by by the dead. And so the workers um, really don't have a lot of options open to them. It's their, their society they live in is pretty authoritarian, I think, I gathered. Um, you know, you just get assigned jobs and, um, you know, you kind of have to do them. But then people think, well, OK, you know, whatever, I can do it for however many years. And then... Um, you know, after that, I will upload. Um, and so um, <laughs> they call it the upter life. Go to the upter life, um, you know, which is, uh, you know, then basically this sort of paradise. And then, um, you know, so the, these young people, though, one of them in particular is somewhat of a rebel and uh, wants to change things. And so, um, you know, seeks to learn um different things, you know, wants to make a better life for himself as well as for others. They live in New York in this particular um, location, but like I said, the servers are scattered all over. Um, there's also been a really a deadly plague, and so the world is really depopulated at this point. Um, so there's another sect, though, called the Neo-Christians, and these are people who reject uploading um, on religious grounds, and they are sort of seen as terrorists, um, so these sort of rebellious uh, young people, along with the neo-Christians, sort of team up uh, to, because uh, they have a common cause, and that is uh, really, um, you know, uh, reforming, I guess, the afterlife. So that's sort of what the book is about, without giving uh, too many spoilers away uh, about it. You know, one of the Fun things that I thought about the book was um, this idea of immortality. You know, like, what would it be like if we did have the ability to upload um, our consciousnesses into um, into some sort of, um, you know, Internet or whatever? And how would the dead then impact the world of the living? And this, 
this little novel sort of explores that idea and it's, you know, usually not good. Um, <laughs> so um, at least um, they can interfere in lots of ways um, as far as controlling because they actually ultimately controlled the access to digitalizing. There was like a vote. So if you've done things wrong um, while you're living, then you might be voided. You might not be allowed to upload at all. And that's sort of what the people live in fear of, except the neo-Christians, of course, they think they have a different afterlife. So they don't fear the, um, you know, the upter life. They don't fear the digital afterlife because they don't get digitized uh, when they die. Um, but that, that was sort of interesting to me, that sort of idea of what the, how the dead would impact, how the world would change if people didn't die, um, and how if you were a digitalized person, your consciousness got digitalized, what would you do you know, in all of the centuries that you would have um, you know, before you? Um, so, you know, this book kind of explores that idea. Um, the other kind of interesting thing I thought was that was interesting about it was this, the neo-Christians versus the, you know, the digital people, the digital, uh, the main culture, because they both really ignored the present life based on the future afterlife. So that's what most people did. The rebels, uh, the rebel humans, the living rebel humans, they... Um, they, you know, were concerned about living because they were just trying to make a good life for themselves, themselves living while they're living, um, to be, to have a good life, um, not some sort of horrible hardship for some future reward. They felt like that, um, there should be able to be a way to, um, maybe still have, you know, to lead, lead the best possible life, um, you know, while they're living, uh, as well. So that idea between, um, so they were kind of, up at, at odds, right? The digital, the people who followed the digital afterlife versus the neo-Christian, they were sort of at odds, but in a way they were the same because they both, both of these groups discounted the present as opposed to the future. And then the, it was only these small band of the living who uh, really was focused on the here and now and trying to make a good life for themselves, you know, now while they're living. So I thought that that part was real interesting. Uh, you know, that idea was real interesting to explore in the book. Um, you know, this book was a lot of fun. Uh, I had hoped it would be really lighthearted and, and fun, and it really was. Um, you know, just a couple of little criticisms I have of it. Um, I, there's supposed to have been 14 generations that have been uploaded. So 14 generations is like 600 years. That would put us in the years of the, the 2600s. Um, and at one point in the book, they use an abandoned shopping mall um, for a setting. And I was like, you know, that's really one of those things that really is kind of, you know, whenever you're reading a book like this, you do have to suspend belief to some degree. When you're watching a movie or when you're reading a book, a lot of times you you need to do this, you know, to get drawn into the, the book itself. Um, and But it was something like that that just jarred me back like, yeah, a shopping mall 600 years in the, an abandoned one, still in, you know, usable condition. Um, that seemed a little implausible to me. And then the other thing was, um, this is written in a real now style. So um, there's not, the author didn't really make an effort to put us into this future, 600 years in the future. Um, you know, the current, it's the current slang, sort of the current, um, I guess, mores, um, among the, the living characters. Um, so it didn't really, um, there wasn't a lot of world building, I could say, I, I guess I should say. Um, but it was still, I still enjoyed it a lot. Um, I, I took it away as a lighthearted, fun, uh, fun read, and I, I really did enjoy reading it. So I think I will stop the chat, uh, with that. Um, what I'm currently reading, let me get, pull up the cover for you. I am currently reading and actually um, almost finished with, uh, let me just uh, get to the cover, Provenance by Ann Leckie. So this came out um, last Tuesday. Uh, it was published last Tuesday, Tuesday just, uh, what, three days ago? So I'm actually almost finished with this. I will likely finish this tonight. This is a space opera. Um, takes place in... The, in the same universe as her trilogy, the ancillary trilogy that Anne Leckie did, um, 
And so it's, it re references the uh, goings on in the previous trilogy, but it's not tied to that culture, the rad, 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 cult, rad culture. It's um, a culture that's outside the rad uh, empire. Uh, but still, it's, uh, it's set in that universe and um, there's a heist, there's a murder, there's mistaken identity, <laughs> there's, there are aliens, the Gek, the Presger, the Ur. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's, it's a fascinating world. I love this universe. I'll chat a bit, a bit more about it um, when I do the book chat for it. And then my next book, my next planned read is um, changing um, gears a little bit. It's Night by Elie Wiesel. Um, this is a memoir uh, from his time in the uh, concentration camps of World War II. He was a Jewish, um, young a Jewish, I think a teenager at the time. And, um, you know, obviously he survived and and wrote this memoir. He eventually did win the uh, Nobel Peace Prize. I'm not exactly sure what year. Um, yeah, this is a translation from, I think, 2012 translated by his wife, Marion. Um, so I am looking forward to Night. I have never read it, although I've heard about it, uh, you know, for forever and uh, always meant to read it. So now's my chance. I'm uh, going to read that next. So um, I guess I will end the chat with that. Until next time, take care. Bye.